Please welcome Elvira Kurt. to be crazy to not love Montreal. You know what I mean? Everyone in Toronto, they all look like they move through their lives like angry raccoons, you know. You come here and people are like, oh, they're just decadent and just oozing sensuality and hedonism, you know. Walk down the street, people are looking at you like, I dare you to have sex with me. <laughs> Yeah, it's a big problem for me, yeah. Grown woman and I look like a 12-year-old boy. Oh, yeah. It's... I'm fighting people off. No, monsieur, please. I say, no, madame, please. I, I am only one half something. Part. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in the world. I have no idea about life. Anyone else at this stage? When I was 20, I knew everything. That has evaporated into what's happening? I have no idea what I should be doing right now. I have no clue. I have lost the focus of my life so completely that I don't even know what I think I should be doing. The only thing I know for sure is that everything I'm doing, I'm doing wrong. <laughs> and that I'm very, very late. <laughs> and you have nobody to turn to when you get older, your parents. You think your parents can help you? That's all we heard growing up. Listen to your parents, your parents. I'm telling you this because I'm your parent. They know nothing. Your parents, these people are afraid of bank machines. <laughs> I put my money in the machine, it's disappearing. Give me my money back, you crap. So we just occupy our days, right? We fill them. We distract ourselves from the fact that we don't know what's going on, and it's kind of creepy. We fill our lives. We make our to-do lists, and we rush through our day. We should not be making to-do lists. You never finish your to-do list. Do you ever get through your list? You just move stuff over to the next day. <laughs> ever find a list you made a year ago? Same shit's on it. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, I really have to get to the bank. <laughs> you never run out and you never get anything done. It's because every day they tell us new things that we have to do in order to live well. And we only feel worse about ourselves because we can't even do that. <laughs> We're supposed to be drinking eight glasses of water a day. Do you know how long it takes to drink eight glasses? Nobody has that kind of time. Eight beers, no problem. <laughs> you suck the alcohol out of it, you start complaining, I, I can't. I already had one and a half. Oh. I never get through my glasses of water, I just move it over to the next day. I'm telling you people, if I don't have 132 glasses of water by midnight tonight, tomorrow is going to be a very long day. <laughs> Just me on the toilet with a pitcher, holy cow. <laughs> hey, I'm never gonna get to the bank. <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody has a clue. And then they treat you like an idiot anyway, right? Like the airport, this is where it begins. This is where you get put back into kindergarten when you walk into the airport. That announcement you hear every 10 seconds, oh, unattended baggage will be confiscated. What kind of person walks into the airport? And, well, here I am. <laughs> oh, my bag. I forgot my bag. <laughs> you know? And yes, by all means, tighten the security, yes. Didn't you always figure that you could get around those two security questions by Lying? <laughs> Did you pack your own bags? Mm, yes, no, no. <laughs> I don't know anybody who doesn't pack their own bag. I didn't pack it. I went to sleep with an empty suitcase beside my bed. I woke up in the morning, they were packed. Do you think it was the packing fairies? 
going to Hawaii? Can you open it up and see if there's a bathing suit? I want to swim. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna, if you want to ask tough questions, ask the question you want an answer to. Right? Oh, are you checking in for your flight? Great. Are you on a suicide mission? <laughs> and number two, did you pack your own bags? Oh my God, and then, and then it's just insult upon insult. Once you get in there, they treat you like you're some kind of criminal. You know, they're rifling through your bags, you know. They find a safety pin, they're like, Ma! Where do you think you're going with this? What are you, an agent of evil? This is staying here. All right, all right, back off, you know. They take your tweezers, your nail clippers. When in your wildest imagination would you ever use a nail clipper as a weapon? Oh! I'm so angry! Oh, come here! I'm so angry! Come here! Oh, pinch up your skin, give me something to cut! tolerance, right, of all the Titan security. Some idiot tries to put a, a bomb in his shoe and now shoes are bad, like, like itchy and scratchy. Yeah, I gotta get on the plane, yeah. <laughs> How, where's it gonna end, right? Well, it's gonna take us some loose cannon to do the unthinkable with a belt and then bam, no more belts. <laughs> How long before you have to show up at the airport three days early, naked in a chamois going, I got nothing! You are an amazing crowd, so hot. What a great crowd. And a nice straight vibe. Do we have a lot of straight people here? By applause. Crab, clap if you're, yeah, yeah, you're straight. Clap if you're, always a little, always a little pause before you clap there. What do you need to think about? What are you thinking about there, my straight friends? Are you like, dreams don't count, right? When I first started doing comedy, I didn't know I was a lesbian, no clue, you know? And I, and I thought that nobody else knew, but somehow I never connected with my audiences, you know? Like somehow they could pick up something subtle in the integrity of my material. Like something little I was giving away. Yeah, I'd be up on stage pretending I was just the same as one of you. I'd be like, hey ladies! <laughs> Don't you hate it when your men have a penis? <laughs> to the drawing board, crumple. But it's no big deal anymore, right? Now, not since Rosie came out. Nobody noticed when Rosie came out. She made it okay. Oh, God, I only wish I knew what she did. I knew her secret, you know. Rosie, when she came out, she, she did it well, didn't she? She didn't say, I'm a lesbian, and then just, mm -hmm, don't look at me, no. She found a cause to hide behind. How brilliant is that? It's like I gotta tell people I'm a lesbian, but I don't want the attention. Oh, the children. Yes, I'm doing it for the children. Look at the children. No one will even notice I'm a lesbian. Ah, look at the children. I'm doing it because of the children. Everyone wants the children. Yeah, I'm a big muff diver. Look at me. Look. Oh, I love pussy. Look at the children. If you have closeted gay friends, tell them to come out. All you need is the right cause. You know, some closeted gay men, tell them to find some cats at some cat rescue, the ones with one ear, and they'll be like, oh, I'm in it for the kittens. Look at that. Kitten only in one ear. I'm a big fudge pecker. Look at that. Right there. Take it right up the ass. Look at me. I'm a, the kittens. <laughs> oh, it's hard for my folks, though, you know, and I, there's a wonderful organization I wish they would belong to, PFLAG, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, and gosh, I just wish my parents would join, you know, and then I think about it realistically, could you see my mom at a PFLAG meeting? <laughs> Hi, my name is Irene. I wish I was dead. <laughs> 
she'd be no help on the crisis line. Give up, it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> and every year, you know, you're gonna have your gay pride very soon. You should come out, check it out. Don't be afraid, my little straight friends. Go as a group, rent a bus. They always march the P-flag parents. Everyone loves the P-flag parents. Who doesn't want a P-flag parent? They're always marching so proud with their signs. My son is gay and he's okay. My mother would be the last one in the line holding up her little tear-stained sign. My daughter's that way. I cry every day. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I love you, Montreal. Thank you. Elvira.